They say that bad luck comes in threes and hindsight is a wonderful thing. And this is what happens to me in uh, part two of uh, building the uh, Batman's armory. Um, so before we watch the video, I just want to say that uh, things don't go all that well, which you're gonna find out in, a, in just a moment. But yeah, uh, I've shortened down this video because there's just no point going through the whole process of what I'm about to do, just to find out at the end that it doesn't work. So let's see what happened. It's part two of three of building Batman's armory from Batman 1989. So in part two, I will be working exclusively on the figure, but uh, let's go through and see what I'm actually gonna do. So to start off with, I will be taking a uh, molding of uh, one of the heads and then, then obviously casting it in uh, epoxy resin so that I can uh, drill out all the interior of the head and uh, display it on the figure like it's an empty suit. Also in part two, I will be uh, making my own custom cape just because I want the cape on the figure just a little bit longer and more heavier just so it drapes down a bit more naturally because as I've said many times in the past, the one on the figure does look like a half opened umbrella. Right, let's get things started. So this whole process will take around about two days to complete mainly because the you know, casting a new head in epoxy resin takes quite a while for it to cure. But we'll be starting off by taking a mould of the head. Right, so as you already know, I am basing this build on the uh, 112 scale uh, Mezco Batman figure, as this is probably the best of uh, the figures in this scale anyway. But yes, we need to take a moulding of the head. So this does come with four heads all in all, and you know, they're all nice and I don't know which one really to choose from them. But uh, it won't be this one. But the one I've gone for is this one, which is like the battle damage Batman, because there are some scuff marks on his eyebrows and uh, I thought it looked quite nice just to have a bit more of a battle damage suit. And uh, yes, yeah, so this is one I'm selected to do the, uh, the molding of. So let's get the uh, silicon mold and uh, start this whole thing off. So we'll be using, obviously, the silicon mould products there. You will need three cups. I've just used an old sprue here just to uh, attach the head on, just to hold up while it's uh, being moulded. Obviously the head and just some silicone uh, release spray there just, just to help things pop out. So let's start. Okay, let's get this disaster. That is part two underway. So as, as I said earlier, there is a, an old sprue that I've just used that I'll place uh, on, the, uh, on the head. Just a bit of glue that will easily pop off just to support it what's in there. Then it's time to mix up the parts A and uh, parts B of the, the silicone mold that I've selected. I just sprayed the inside of the cup with some silicone release spray just to help it uh, pop out. Now it's time to mix the parts A and parts B. Really easy, it's just a one to one ratio, so it's just equal amount of each, and then giving a good mix until both the colors have uh, obviously mixed in. And then just pouring again and leaving it to set. Okay, so it's been, uh, well, the best part of five hours since I uh, poured this. Yeah, let's see if we can demold this. So, I did spray some um, the silicone release spray in this, so hopefully, if not, I suppose we could just peel it off. Yeah, it's coming off. Yeah, nice clean. Uh, right, okay, so I'm gonna have to cut along there. Try and get these quite deep down there, actually. I must have, must have over poured just a little bit. Um, all right, well, let's uh, cut this open and see if we can get it out. Uh, so I'll just make an incision. Right, yeah, I had to get a bigger knife. Uh, yeah, so basically, it's there it is. And uh, yeah, I think I have over poured by quite a bit. 
uh, whilst pouring it, it didn't look like it was that deep, but uh, there we go. So it looks like uh, I'm going to have to perhaps split it down the sides here a bit more. Doesn't matter because I'll be putting this back in the cup again, so hopefully that'll just keep it squeezed shut when I do end up pouring it. But let's uh, open up the sides a bit more. Okay. Uh, there we go. There he is. He's not damaged or anything. And uh, yeah, there we go. So hopefully we've got a decent mold in there. It's difficult to see. Um, yeah, I think on the sides there it might be a bit messy, but uh, it's all right because the next job now is to uh, cast it again. Just need to make that hole a bit bigger and then uh, see how it happens. I mean, I think the head will be fine, but perhaps around the bottom here and these and these bits where I've had to rip out the mould, it might be, be a bit messy, but uh, yeah, I'll have to tidy it up uh, once it is been cast. So I'm going to go away and just make this a bit more easier to pour. And then, yeah, we'll uh, get this going because this will take quite a while to set. So mixing the parts A and the parts B for the epoxy resin, uh, yeah, I did it way, way too much than I needed. Uh, I went for the whole, oh, I'll do it like last time, kind of approach, and yeah, I, I over poured uh, by quite a bit. So I had loads and loads left over, which I couldn't do anything with. So uh, yeah, that was a bit of a wasted material there. But uh, yeah, so just gonna mix these up and then uh, pour it in and see what happens. So it's said to stir slowly for five minutes. So I'll do this for five minutes and I'll catch up again in just a moment. So another issue I had was, uh, one, I didn't put any vents in this thing, so all the resin couldn't go down to the bottom, and two, I don't have, I don't have or have access to one of those vacuum chambers, so, uh, yeah, a bit tricky to do. Right, well, I think that's filled. Uh, I've removed the uh, excess. Uh, it's probably just a little bit to sit on top of there. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed that this works. If not, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare to redo again. All right, well, I'm gonna put this somewhere uh, sort of warmish and uh, let it do its thing. And uh, yeah, clean everything up. Why not use something, what an idiot. Right, so while that's curing, I'm going to start now on the cape. So I'm going to be using the spare cape that comes with uh, the Mezco figure. It's the unwired one and using it for size, obviously. And I do have here some uh, like fake leather and a liner as well, because, you know, obviously the fake leather does have that sort of, uh, you know, backing on there, which isn't going to look that good. But yeah, the plan is to uh, attach this to that and then uh, try and, you know, put some weight on there just so it hangs quite nicely. Now I'm going to make the, or well, my version of the cape, a little bit longer than this one just so it drapes down a bit more because uh, I think it's just a little bit too short and, uh, you know, I think it'll look good uh, if it's just a little bit longer. This is just for displaying inside of the uh, vault, so uh, detailing wise I'm not too bothered about that, but I will try and purchase as much detail in this as I can. So let's start by cutting out some templates. So for the cape, uh, as I said, I'm using uh, the fake leather or pleather as um, it's also known as, and yeah, basically I'm just going to use the unwired version of the cape to uh, make my own one just as a you know just as a basis to go off uh, for size wise anyway i start off just by tracing round the the cape there and then cutting out uh well not just cutting out but also making that just a little bit bigger and also gives me more space to work as well just in case i make some errors i can you know i've got a bit to play with there i don't have to keep wasting material like i did with the uh, resin and after cutting out the, the shape of the cape, uh, I just resize it again. I want to make sure it's the right size. And then I get the figure over and I just put it on just um, loosely, just to see how well it hung, you know, because it's quite a thick material. So I knew I was going to have to remove quite a bit to get the uh, look I was uh, looking for. But again, just trimming off just a little bit more because it was just a little bit too long on the top. Then I'm going to cut out these segments so I can uh, have a, you know, I can play around with it a bit more. It was um, a little bit too thick material and I couldn't find anything thinner at the time. So uh, I'm going to make this as a template 
cape and then uh, as you can see here I'm going to just lay each one over the top of each other and then when it comes to the final fitting I can just pinch them all together to get the shape that I want and then I can uh, go in there and do things properly. And as you can see there, I'm now gonna put on some more tape so I can put on the backing, which is like this nylon material. Obviously I trim all that off, make it all tidy. And then next I do fit it back onto the figure again, just to see how it looks. As you can see, it's uh, even more like an umbrella. So I cut some incisions in there where, it's, where it tends to build up just to see how it's gonna fall. And then I add some tape just to keep it in that place because the plan is, I keep saying the plan is, but the plan is uh, once I've got this as a template, I'll then go back and make up the proper cape because uh, it'll be too messy with all these cuts on there. But I mean, it looks pretty good if you wanted an open cape like this one, um, but I don't want an open cape or a closed one, but uh, I don't want to, you know, I want it to look, uh, you know, like it's ready to be suited up. So hopefully that'll come across that way, but we shall see. Okay, so that's the end of day one. So I got quite a bit done, and uh, for now I've finished with the cape. It needs a lot of finite adjustments, but uh, I don't want to do any more until the vault is built, and then I can uh, shape the cape inside the vault as I need it. It looks okay, uh, it needs a lot of tidying up, but uh, it's pretty much there. Of course, you know, I will be bringing this in so it, you know, so it looks like it's draping down quite nicely. But again, it needs a lot of adjustments, but uh, I don't want to do that until the bolt builds. So I'm not too sure which room is going to be in there yet. Right, so I've now got to wait until about 5 p.m. tomorrow until the epoxy resin has cured, and we'll see if uh, what I've done has actually worked. So I'll see you tomorrow. Right, it is the next day, and here it is. Uh, I don't know if you can hear this. But it's yeah, it's solid as far as I know. So uh, it's time to demold this and see if you know it's worked. I'm a little bit unsure um, because the uh, the head was in upside down. I don't know if you know if the base of the cowl has been done or not. But uh, yeah, let's um, yeah see what we got. Right here goes nothing. Uh, so. I think that's all stuck together, so I need to get on with my scissors. I reckon I'll probably end up destroying the mould, uh, getting this out, but we'll see. Okay, so obviously I've got the bit on top of there. I um, don't know if it's worked or not. Hmm, okay. Uh, I think it might have worked. Let's have a look. So can. Quite handy having this bit on top. Looks like a broken uh, wine glass at the moment. Uh, right. Come on. It's free! And, um, okay, well, the mop is not bad, but unfortunately, uh, his ears didn't uh, take all that well. Uh, and actually, this bit, which I was right about, did form. His emblem didn't. Okay, that's, is there anything I've left behind in here? Uh, nothing that side. Now, so it looks like his emblem uh, and the ear spaces seem to be, uh, okay, so for a first go, that's not too bad. Uh, show me about his ears otherwise I could have uh, you know just done something about that tidy it up maybe um, overall it's not actually that bad but yeah it's still a failure nonetheless so the plan was gonna be if this turned out um, you know look pretty good or you know he had ears at least I was gonna hollow out all around the mouthpiece and the eyes 
and uh, that to uh, make it appear that can we snap this off that's, that's pretty strong stuff uh, yeah to make it appear that it was an empty cal so yeah I'm gonna have to go away and uh, redo this and uh, try and be a bit more um, careful with the ears maybe I stuck a, a cocktail stick down there or something it might fill the gap all right well it's not all bad but uh, yeah I'll have to come back and uh, recast this basically right so after realizing that I didn't add any uh, you know vents so the air could escape from certain areas here is number two and actually it came out pretty well uh, there are the ears as you can see uh, there's a little bit on top of there but you know it's not that bad and yeah it's come out exactly how I was hoping it would uh, unfortunately the uh, bottom half you know the emblem there uh, is half cast and you know yeah and also around the bottom of the cowl, none of the, you know, the, the sort of spikes. I mean, they do look like spikes, but they're a lot shorter than they need to be. And uh, otherwise, this came out pretty good. The only other thing, uh, you see out there, his nose didn't form either. Even though I put a vent there, um, an air bubble sort of trapped in there. So, yeah, this is no good either. So, I went away and did a third casting. And, uh, yep, yeah, again, this came out pretty well. Uh, the ears again came out nice. Same as the other one, it's just um, a bit broken on top. It must be the way that I demold it. The emblem came out this time. A little bit rough around the side there, nothing too bad. But again, um, even though I'm, I've been adding these vents in, none of the bottom of the cowl is getting cast. And his nose is even worse than it was before. It's an even bigger chunk taken out of there. I, uh, it's very strange because I pour the. Uh, resin into the mould, you can see the uh, you know, the resin starting to seep out of the vent I made for it, but it's still got an air bubble trapped in there somehow. So yeah, there we go. There's three failed attempts at uh, casting a mould. Now, I am no expert at casting these sort of things, or making moulds, but I have done them in the past, and, you know, it's like making pancakes. The first one's always a bit rubbish, but then, you know, the second, third one, you always seem to get, you know, the, the result you're looking for. Maybe this one's a bit too complicated with all the spikes around the bottom here and all the other pointy bits. Maybe it's just um, a little bit too complicated for my understanding at the moment. So I do have a plan B, uh, which I didn't want to do, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to, well, I've already activated plan B. So there, let me show you what I've done. So you may remember the head that had the movable eyes. So yeah, I've taken this um, head, which is one of the four heads to come with this figure, I've removed the uh, back cover, removed the eyes, and here they are, being all eyeball-y. And of course, I've uh, removed the uh, mouthpiece as well. So I get the look I was, you know, trying to get, which was to have like an empty looking, uh, you know, cowl. Oh, there we go. Obviously I need to cover up that hole in the back there, but yeah, so when the door opens, it's just gonna look like an empty suit, basically. Uh, I mean, I haven't damaged this. Uh, I've had to trim off a little bit of plastic around there just to get the right shape I needed. But otherwise, you know, I mean, this was a look I was trying to go for by using these instead, um, but unfortunately it's not quite worked. I will have another bash at those, but uh, yeah, I mean, this isn't supposed to be the centerpiece of the uh, the whole project. You know, obviously the vault is, you know, that's what that's where we're spending most of my time and energy doing. Uh, but this would have been a nice little bonus. But uh, there we go. So yeah, I just need to tidy up around the bottom of the cowl there. And uh, yeah, yeah, let's put them on the figure. There we are. So it will look something like that once I cover up those holes. I think it looked good, uh, and the cape as well. Let's talk about that. Uh, so I've done this template for now, and as I already said in the video, uh, you know I have I'm going to be shaping this. So I've made various cuts along the cape, and then I'm going to be pinching it in. And then once that's all at the correct size, I'll then go ahead and uh, yeah I will make this again to the appropriate size because I really need the vault to be in place so I can see how much this needs to tuck in or not to tuck in. But it's got all right. This is probably the only thing out of part two that's gone 
to plan thus far. But there we go. There's our uh, lineup of bat heads. And uh, yeah, never mind. So, what's next? So up next will be part three, which will be the final part to this build. Here's the, uh, you know, the diorama as it stands at the moment. Obviously, uh, I've added some more clay on top, which is now dried. So next is building the vaults, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm using multiple materials for that. And uh, yes, it's gonna look really good. I've done lots of planning and prep for that. So that yeah, should go well <laughs> this time. Well, you shall see. Now I have uh, more confidence in building the vault than I do, uh, you know, molding ahead anyway. But yes, I will build the vaults. And then once that's built, I can then build up the rest of the rocks coming up here to draw onto this one. Then fixing in the vault and obviously uh, putting something down here to cover up the XPS foam. Mainly on the board and obviously I'll be, put, I'll be putting a little light in there as well to uh, light up the figure. And that will be that project done. So thank you very much for watching and thank you for your patience on this build. Uh, unfortunately, I mean part two, like I said, wasn't like the centerpiece of this build. It was just more of a bonus, but unfortunately just luck wasn't on my side and there we go. But part three will be back on form. We'll be, you know, it'll look much better. Anyway, until the next time, I'll see you next time. It's Matt in the retro room. Join Matt in the retro room. Watch Matt in his retro room. Subscribe for more and stay tuned.